Hi, it's Marilyn Price. I was just doing some finishing touches on our story for today. I was about to send you a note because so, this is a story we're going to tell responsibly right after we meet another character friend of mine. The story is called The Very Quiet Cricket. I said that too loud, so let's do that again. The Very Quiet Cricket. Got it? Okay. So there is one line, actually three lines, in our story that is repeated, not one, not two, not three, not four, five, but nine times. So I thought when we came to that part, you could help me do it. So I wrote it on a piece of paper, like that, and I'm going to fold it up and send it to you. Here, you got it? Great job. Oh, great. Picture? Wait. Oh, yeah. All right, there it is. Oh, perfect. All right, now, put it somewhere you can see it. Now, on the chance that you can't see it, or you're not ready to read yet, or maybe you just want to make up your own line, that's cool, too. I wrote it out on my board back here, so maybe you and I could read it together. What do you say? The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. So if you do nothing else but say, not a sound, so cool. The story that we're going to tell is the very quiet cricket. So for those of you who have ever had crickets in your neighborhood, what they do is they rub their wings together. I, mean, I, I don't have wings. And they make a sound. Now, in my neighborhood, sometimes when we go out for a walk at night, it's so noisy. But then all of a sudden, they're gone. And they don't make noise during the day. So I want to tell you a little bit about crickets and then about a very famous cricket who's not in our story today. So Eric Carle's book, always beautifully illustrated, right? He tells us this because there's always something to learn. There are 4,000 different kinds of crickets. Some live underground and others above. Some live in shrubs or trees and some even live in water. Both male and female crickets can hear but only the male makes a sound. By rubbing his wings together, he chirps. Some people say it sounds like a song. And I would imagine one cricket to another cricket, it does. So, speaking of crickets, I want you to meet one of my favorite characters, Jiminy Cricket. He comes from an 1883 book but he doesn't. The cricket in that book called Pinocchio, written by Carlo Collodi, doesn't have a name. He doesn't have the Jiminy name. That didn't come until 1940 when Walt Disney Studios made a movie called Pinocchio about a little boy. Now, there's a couple of myths about that story. One is that there was a cricket named Jiminy. The original story, no, not at all. And the other was that uh, Pinocchio's nose grew every time he told a lie. Well, in the original version, 1883 version, his nose only grew once. <laughs> um, but apparently that was enough. And in my uh, personal favorite Pinocchio is one, is this dude here. It's a very, not an ancient puppet, but one that was made quite a while ago that I found. And he's a string puppet. Hence that famous song also from that 1940 version is, I got no strings to tie me down. So this is my friend, Pinocchio. The Pino means pine, and the Occhio actually means eye in Italian, but uh, he's not made of wood. Mine is made out of plastic, so I'm not going to change his name. If you recall, each of these strings has a name, and it's called by what they move. So what does he do? This is his arm string. And he does have strings on his knees, which make his legs kick and bend a little bit. Because, of course, in the Disney version, he dances a whole lot more than the cricket whose name was Cricket in the movie. But he gets the name Jiminy Cricket. And Jiminy Cricket, in that version, is the conscience, the good news, the telling him what to do news maker. 
And not always does Pinocchio listen, but this is not for today's story. Today's story is about a quiet cricket, and we are going to play the part of the quiet cricket by you. Rub your wings together like that. It takes a sleeve to do it. Works really well if you have two file boards, emery boards, and you can make noise too. Okay, so if you're ready to tell the story with me, I'll do some of the lines and then you are the verse with me. And it goes, the little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. We're not going to make any noise until we get to the very end. And our story goes like this. Jiminy's going to help me do it. One warm day from a tiny egg, a little cricket was born. Welcome, chirped a big cricket, rubbing his wings together. The little cricket wanted to answer. So he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Good morning, whizzed a locust, spinning through the air. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Hello, whispered a praying mantis, scraping its huge front legs together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Good day, crunched a worm, munching its way out of an apple. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Bubbled a spittle bug, slurping in a sea of froth. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. The little cricket saw a screech bug, a cicada. Good afternoon, screeched a cicada, clinging to a branch of a tree. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. How are you, hmm, hummed a bumblebee, flying from flower to flower. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Good night, buzz, the mosquito dancing among the stars. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. A lunar moth sailed gently through the night, and the cricket enjoyed the stillness. As a lunar moth disappeared silently into the distance, the cricket saw another cricket. Then he rubbed his wings together one more time. And this time he chirped the most beautiful sound that she had ever heard. Thank you, Eric Carl, for teaching us that we don't always hear everything, but that somebody, another creature, hears what we have to say if we listen very carefully. I wish you a quiet and peaceful day, a day where words matter. For us at the Mentor Project, please look in on our Facebook page. And please check into LinkedIn if you have it. And oh, by the way, you can catch us on YouTube. This is Marilyn Price, and you are who you are. And be a really good one. For Jiminy and myself, and even for Pinocchio, I wish you a good day. That's...